On this episode of Chicago Beer Pass, Nick and I are drinking some cans from Burnt City after our episode at District Brew Yards as we look through the map for this year's 10th bug. Beer under glass and it kicks off Illinois Craft Beer Week. All that more on this week's episode. Dude, these last three weeks are week, you, what'd you make it to? Yeah, because you know, it's gonna court out, the boop, it flies like fucking 10 feet. We're like, yeah, let's do it. The legend, Mr. Pete Crowley. I, I, I love Pete Crowley, man. I, I, how's, that, how's that beer? It's what you think it is. It'll, it'll be like the stuff you hear. You ever go to, every time you go to Floyd's, all the music sounds like this. Raw, raw, raw. Hey, and welcome to Chicago Beer Pass. I'm Brad Chmielewski. Brad, what's up, man? I'm Nick White. Double episode this week. Back to back. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're drinking some fine Burnt City beer. Coming off of our trip to District Brew Yards. Talking to uh, Bulldog, Burnt City, and Around the Bend. You know, I think we commented um, in that episode that it's the, probably the first time we've had we've had those crews on the show separately, and then we had them all back as a collective. Mm-hmm. And that, that was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, it's a testament to their uh, to their journey. We probably would only done one episode, but it's Illinois Craft Beer Week. Yeah, so, so we got a lot to talk about. We had to we had to come back again with a double hitter this week. I like that man, back to back, yeah. like the cover of Lethal Weapon. <laughs> <laughs> and so, like I said, we're drinking some uh, Burnt City beers, and we got some IPAs. Nick has got the double, and I got the single, but they're both hazy here. Yeah, they're hazy. Uh, this is the Narwhal Picnic, man, the double dry hop. And I believe that's the uh, Quike companion to the Narwhal, right? Okay, yeah. Yeah, so this is actually a little overwhelming. It's 8.7 on, on a, <laughs> a double IPA. Um, it's got a Denali, Citra, and Equinot. Nice. And I don't know which one's doing what, but it's like, you know, you get like papaya and lime in addition to like your orange peel kind of thing. And I love how it's just a big whack of boozy alcohol right in the middle. Um, yeah, it's something that will, if you're looking to be overwhelmed, this will do the job. And sometimes you need that. Mm-hmm. And I've got the Keeve Mind It. This has the Citra Amarillo, but it's got that Norwegian farmhouse yeast going on. So They're not afraid to mix it up on the labels, too. Like, this is all, well, these, this is a limited release, so maybe that's why the label's different. But every time they come out... They're not afraid to like just revamp their whole style with the labels. Uh, yeah, and you know you gotta get on that tall boy trend where you just slap the sticker on the can, right? It's here, man. That yeah. that wave is here. And it's good. It's good to roll, especially they're pumping out so much beer at that location, like we said on the episode. And so, if they can sell it all there, either on tap or in cans, like yeah. more power to them. The most impressive thing, like this uh, Narwhal Picnic, was canned um, five days ago, right? And that's one of the most impressive things is that everything they do, big or small run, is getting the can treatment, mm-hmm. right? So they're kind of like, they want that to be there at dinner day. I don't even think you're getting growlers there. I mean, I'm sure if you brought your own, maybe, but I don't think they were doing growlers. I don't know. Does anyone do growlers yeah. anymore? Or, yeah, it's probably getting, you're probably getting a growler. You're mm-hmm. probably getting a can. Was there a date on that can, or are you just looking no, at No, no, it's right here. Yeah, right next to the uh, the descriptors. Oh, thrilling okay. is a <laughs> thrilling, juicy and tropical art description. The keep mind it doesn't have a date on it, oh, but no? the top has a uh, what's that five seven nineteen, which was probably the keep mind it, but this is a mixed, yeah, mixed little mixed, pack mixed here, four pack. Yeah, mm. uh, that was a fun. That was a fun ride, man. I don't yeah. think uh, they talked about. Um, there were some things we missed that I really wanted to talk about, and now I'm drawing a blank because I I kind of mentioned it after the show and I forgot we were drinking a lot. Um, that we should have mentioned. That we or should, should have discussed with them mm, on the show. That's right. Yeah. I, I, it will come back to it. I can't remember either, but, but. Uh, yeah, it's awesome that they want to add you know, coffee and they want to get more food, or not get more food in there, but be open on uh, Mondays and more often through the week for those lunch spots and things yeah. like that. So yeah. that's pretty nice to see. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it was nice to sit down with all three crews in an empty beer hall. Right, this place holds two hundred. All the cha- all the chairs are up except <laughs> for the table we're at, and you know we're just chilling in this big, gorgeous space. I dug that on a Monday because they brew on Monday, but the public is not open on mm-hmm. to the public on Monday. Um, and yeah, I think I said in that episode, like I was standing outside waiting for you to show up. People were coming up. Some guy was like taking pictures across the street, yeah. like doing his thing, and then he like went up to the door. And he's like, "Oh, they're closed." And he had t- spent like a good ten minutes like taking pictures of the outside. So he got burned. 
<laughs> someday, someday soon they will be open. And then they got the unofficial after party happening after bug. Yeah. Um, it's only like three stops away on the green line. That's crazy. So, um, yeah. Cheers to all those guys, man. Uh, Bulldog around the bend, Burn City mm -hmm. for, um, for having us out, man. It was funny. They were talking about things have been really cool, even with the self port stuff. But they had to kick a dude out because he kept watching porn at one of the fucking bars. I know. It's like he's watching anime porn. <laughs> and they tell him to turn it, he turns, turn it off, he turns it off. And then you come back and he's like doing it again. It's like, come on, man, what are you doing? You know, I, bet, I bet that stuff happens more than <laughs> we know or most people realize, right? Yeah. Like, I can't even imagine for all those bartenders who are like those late night bars or even like 4 a.m. bar. Like, what, what kind of disaster do you see that you're just like, Get me out of here. <laughs> yeah. No. So that's a good episode. So that's a we dedicated a full show to the Burn City trip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they talk about like what the, what the the roots of the concept and what it was gonna be initially and, and what it ended up being, you know. And um, yeah, it's just a good listen. I I enjoyed going out there mm -hmm. and some of the beers that they got coming up. So mm -hmm. that's pretty exciting to see they're pumping through so much beer that it's always new. Dude, thirty <laughs> beers on tap, always new. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You didn't realize there there was a gap there. There was a gap between right, like the north end of the brewing district, and you know basically River North to Noble Square. Mm -hmm. There's a gap there, and here they come with food and thirty beers, and they're rolling all night long right off Ashland. It, it's I'm I'm happy for them. That's it's nuts. A, that's yeah. a cool setup. Oh. Um, well, we'll get into some of the events happening for Illinois Craft Beer Week here in a minute. But Nick was out and about. I slacked off. Man, but was, you were out. I was out a little bit, man. Um, went to Cooper's Hawk. That's the uh, winery mm -hmm. out in Oak Park, and um, well, there's the, multiple locations. Yeah, they're all over the rock place. Rock bottom right? of wineries. They're the rock bottom of wineries. <laughs> uh, they do have a nice restaurant. Brussels sprouts are actually acceptable. You know, if you do, I can't eat Brussels sprouts, but theirs, theirs were good. You can't eat them. I, can't, like, I mean, I just don't like them. You know, oh, they're, all, okay. they're so dense and kind of earthy and gross. I don't uh, like I them. eat them all the time. I can't. I can't get down, mm. man. Oh, but theirs were good. Oh, but I'm bringing it up because. Um, <laughs> They have this sampler, right? They have the bar, and, you know, there's no tables. It's, you know, it's a standing bar, and they give you – it's actually a pretty good deal. I think you get, like, almost in around the world, you get, like, eight different wine glasses, little baby wine glasses, little sample glasses, and of a, a flight. You get a flight of eight. Okay. Um, oh, but, you know, I'm like, hey, man, this is cool, and I love the price point. But how about you stop pouring one at a time? How about you give me all eight? Why don't you quit fucking around? I don't. I want to go. I don't want to have this whole one. I want to. I want to go back and forth. Oh yeah. Okay. You know. I don't know. You know the way a brewery would. You know. And they're like, um, actually, um, we can't. We don't do that here. Are they not allowed to? Or? <laughs> I mean, they're not allowed to. We asked like, like two or three folks. The first guy was like, "Yeah, I'll do it," and then he just kind of skedaddled. We didn't see him anymore. Then the second guy's like, "I'll do two. but it's, it's not a thing. It's not a. It's not a thing that people ask. It's not a thing that they do, so it was just—it's just an interesting wrinkle in the wine sampling world. Hmm, that right. doesn't seem—that doesn't seem. Right. I bet it's a. You think it's a Cooper's Hawk thing? I think it's a Cooper's Hawk thing. Okay. Because, yeah. of course, you like. I don't know. Maybe I'm coming at it from a different perspective, but okay. then again, you have really isn't don't you have like three sips of something or just like by the time you have a glass like your palate's wrecked already so yeah you bouncing I mean, around between eight like going back and forth doesn't it, it do doesn't it, it doesn't do much for i guess it, they feel the same way as you do brad yeah like it's yeah. all your mouth is coated and your palate is destroyed so yeah whatever you think you like is just at that point whatever yeah. like coming through right you know i thought this was america and you know i could have it any way i wanted that's that's what i thought that's but, like burger king <laughs> but it's only at burger king <laughs> <laughs> but i was wrong man but um you know it was, it was fun nonetheless man it was an eight dollar place so it's in there it's like you know so the dollar wine then right oh well, yeah that's pretty good <laughs> yeah. yeah it's fun man it's like um it's 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 uh female centric Okay. A lot, a lot, a lot of lady action at the uh, at this bar getting down on these. Did wine you samples. only like the Brussels sprouts because you had eight wines? Is that is that how this played I'm out? Like, God damn! I don't. I never eat Brussels sprouts. These are great. <laughs> um, but it was it was it was solid. But I liked the uh, I, I I enjoyed the wines. That part was interesting. The fact okay. that they like almost ref they well they didn't almost they refused to give me all eight. Yeah. Of the sample glasses, the cute little sample wine glasses. It's funny that you bring up Cooper Talk because I might be heading out there. You know, it's Mother's Day coming up. Yeah, right. And on. so, like, it's a good spot, a good Mother's Day spot. 
Yeah. What else did I do, man? Oh, um, I made it to White Sox Park, Guarantee Right Field. Okay. To see the uh, see the good guys, the Chicago White Sox play. Oh, I thought you were gonna say see the good guy, uh, Josh. From the Kankakee Journal. Oh, yeah. Josh was there, man. Because, you know, he's always wearing his Red Sox hat. He's a Red Sox fan. They were playing uh, Boston, the world champ. So uh, I hung out with Josh. At enemy ter- he was in enemy, t- enemy territory. White yeah. Sox versus Red Sox, man. Um, we won the first game. I think uh, world champs took the next three. Oh, okay. Uh, but we were, you know, we were there for the booze, right? They do uh, they do beer a little differently down there, right? They got like 70 different options on the craft set. Okay. Right? And then Goose has that massive... Um, water park. Yeah. <laughs> they have this water park that ends up being like, you know. <laughs> the Goose is a trip, man. All right, so I'll just read you some of the beers that were at the Goose um, the Goose Island uh, Beer Company. So draft, cans, and bottles. Right? Okay. Um, yeah, there's like a 10-foot, it's a massive Goose tap handle. Right, It's got to be like 10, 15 feet tall. Mm-hmm. It's the biggest thing out there. Right, On draft, uh, uh, 312 and 312 dry hopped. Okay. Uh, Green no, line. No rhubarb? No rhubarb. Oh, it's uh, wait, Old Man Grumpy, uh, Next Coast, Goose Island, Born and Raised Chicago Ale, which sounds like a pale ale. Draft only pale ale which for the city. Blue line. Or no, oh. Next Coast was blue line, right? No, you're right. No, um, Next Coast was it was a straight up IPA, but you're right. I think blue line was a dry hot pale. Okay. I think you're right. Uh, in cans, they have a uh, 312, 312 dry hop, Natural Villain. That's the garage logger with that band. Uh, Next Coast again. And SPF, that's a passion fruit ale. And this was actually pretty good, SPF. Nice. I enjoyed SPF. And then uh, Sophie and Matilda. Cool. Yeah. So nothing too crazy. I went straight for the Sophie. Just give me the Sophie. What are, we, what are <laughs> we doing here? Give me the Sophie. Oh, but Josh had the uh, SPF. And I'm like, you know what? This is good. Yeah. It's, 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 it's clean. It's refreshing. You know, on a 70 degree day, it's where you want to be. Right, it works. It totally works. So, yeah, um, we hung out at the Goose Tent, man. Oh, but then you go just a few sections down on the other side of the concourse and go upstairs, and Revolutions uh, Social Tap is there. Oh, nice. It's an okay. upstairs bar. Um, so they got a ton of Rev stuff, and then they also have like 18th Street and Pipeworks up there. Damn. Yeah. So I went uh, Lizard King and Blooded a Unicorn from Pipeworks. Yeah. So. Exciting stuff. You go downstairs behind the outfield. There's a bullpen bar called the uh, Craft Cave. Mm-hmm. Down there, you can get stuff like uh, Maple Woods down there, you know, and then um, you know Hot Butchers down there. But you know, like they go really heavy into local options, which is is pretty exciting. Nice. Yeah. So I went there. Sounds pretty good. Yeah, man. Uh, and then while you were over there or out that way, you hit up Weiner, right? I saw that. Yeah, man. For the first time in um like two years. Yeah. So um, our friend Mel from who used to be at Windy City, uh, she's out there now. And then, you know, they're doing pizzas inside of uh, Weiner now, which I didn't – I don't think they were doing that before. Like whoever the pizza the pizza maker was, they're doing it from inside there now. Oh, cool. Yeah. So I got a – their focus is uh, wild and blended saisons. I had something called Pretty Bird, which is pretty amazing. It's got like, you know, these, these three different like um, – like uh, yeast cultures in it from, you know, like some kind of Belgian yeast cultures. Mm-hmm. Um, I really dug that. I like their fancy glassware. I like how it's, um, you know, you feel at home in this joint. You're in a part of town that, honestly, I had never been unless I was going to the plant because you're on like 46 and, fuck, I don't know, Racine or something. <laughs> okay. Right? Like there's no there's no other landmarks that I, you would hit up over there, right? Like unless you live down there. Back of the yards is a neighborhood, you know, because the old Chicago stockyards are out there. Um, yeah, so it's just south of like the ballpark and Mars. So, like, yeah. So, um, they're kind of, they're literally on an island, but they got such a cool setup. Yeah. Like, uh, that's definitely like, that's, I, that's a like, recommended bar right there. Was Brewer, the farmer's Brewer. market going on or was it the, no. the, not that day? Maybe it hasn't no. started yet. So it was, uh, yeah, because the plant, I think there's room for like 11 tenants in the plant. Okay. Yeah. Um, that spice company's there, and then of course Four Letter Word is there at a coffee shop. Yeah, and then um, and then the pizza joint, but then I don't know the other tenants. I don't think they're like uh, customer facing, like food or beverage tenants. So, mm-hmm. yeah, nice. But cheers to them, man. I enjoyed their offering at uh, Uppers and Downers, and then I got a chance to go there again too. Man, see, you're getting after it, dude. Uh, anything else, or was that that was pretty? That was pretty full. That's a full week, and then you know we roll around Monday, and then we're at. Uh, the yards. Yeah. And the now, other yards. The other uh, brew yards. Go from the back of the yards to the brew yards. Yeah. And now you got to take it easy because rolling up on Friday, it all starts. 
Intense, man. It's the um, it's Illinois Craft Beer Week. Right, and this is the tenth bug. Yeah, um, you know, we we've, we've had uh, Justin Maynard on the show a few times. I think when he when it made the transition from Chicago Craft Beer Week to Illinois Craft Beer Week, mm-hmm. um, and you know, I'm fine with that. I don't I don't really care. Um, but like, what kind of bothers me is that they don't. It's not bookended properly. Like there was a closing ceremony, right, and then like it rotated. But then, like, it, some years there was not one, and then it came back on. Like, yeah. It would be cool, like, because the opening ceremony is so dope, right? And it's the same thing every year, and it's something you can depend on, right? And then, but the close is, is something that doesn't match that. So it, that, that's weird to me. Right. Is know? there a close this year? I don't think so, man. Mm. So, like, um, I think this, uh, I want to say the bug kind of kicks off Illinois Craft Beer Week. And then it kicks off this whole summer long passport kind of thing, right? So why close it? Well, yeah, I see what you're saying. So maybe yeah. maybe treat it like that now, right? Yeah, that's the best way to look at it. I think uh, Wells Park was probably the sweet spot for the closing ceremony, that where was it good. happened like um, you know, it was over three years. It happened twice. Um, West Loop had one that sat right outside of, on, I want to say like Canal Street or maybe Clinton Street, right outside of like Ogilvy Station. Yeah, that was nuts. I, I did, uh, that year I did that and Beer Fly Alley Fight. Yeah. In the same, same day, mm-hmm. started there, drank a couple beers, went to the Alley Fight yeah. out at Haymarket. I can remember like really getting into events, just being somebody that really dug events. I really, I really fell hard for events when, when Craft Beer Week came around. Like I just start to seek them out all year long, cause because of the frenzy of the seven day craft beer week one. Run. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's upon us, man. It is here, man. Nice. Yeah. Uh, but bug is sold out. Yeah, good for them. Bug is sold out. Last um, year it didn't sell out. Cause I think it, they moved it. I think they moved it a day. Went from Thursday to Friday. It's on Friday this year. Yeah. And I'm I'm a little concerned, cause this weekend was like prime and then we're rain yeah, it was 70, was 70 and that time it rained for bug was a mud disaster yeah you walk to the bluestone terrace which is the <laughs> the western edge of the grounds it's the it's the furthest from the entrance and um yeah like people were really like grabbing like they were passing out like grocery bags mm-hmm. and people were putting them on the shoes because you know it gets really it gets really hectic and back grocery there. bags do not protect your shoes mm-hmm. yeah that's that's a fact um <laughs> They got uh, what every literally like every brewery. It seems like almost every brewery in the state comes to this party. Mm-hmm. And then this year, I noticed um, the they've got a ton of food options that I don't think I saw. Oh, before. that's good. I always forget to eat or don't eat. Yeah, and I like how this year, you know, in the past, have been food trucks that sat outside, but now it looks like they're just going to be in the action. Along you go, you walk by ten breweries, and then boom, you'll see like five eateries. Okay, as, cool. As, as stationed right next to the breweries. That's smart. Yeah, honey butter fried chicken. Everybody, you know, from you know empanada people to to Molly Spaceship. Like uh, there's like six or seven nice food options. There. Cool. Uh, that'd be good. Yeah. And uh, so when you go in to Bug, mm-hmm. we're gonna talk about Bug after we're or after what we're. Well, when you go there, where do you start? Do you go? Do you do one lap? Do you start at the A's and work your way around? Do you go the other way to the Z side? Yeah, I like to I like to walk in and make my way to that little I wish I had a map on me, but you walk in and then, you know, there's the main the main uh the main shot, right? Yeah. With the really big cool like greenery everywhere, right? I like to hang a right and go okay. down and go ahead. You head towards the end of the alphabet. Yes. Okay. And then there's like this little, little hidden, uh, little hidden courtyard on the right. I like to go out there. Okay. Yeah, that's my that's my usually my first stop. Yeah, that's not a bad run. I I want to look at the map because I I would love to know if someone like Phase Three are they gonna be there? Yeah, that's that's a uh, fair question. Do you have the map handy? Uh, let's see. We got a little preview of the map going on, and we didn't pull it up in time. Um, I don't even know what email I have that going to. God damn it, Brad. Oh wait, here we go. It's a beer under glass map. Man, I can't believe it's 10 years of beer under glass. Yeah, I was thinking about um, some of my favorite moments over the years, and my very first beer under glass was definitely up there. Um, another one of my faves, man, was um, back in 2012 when uh, Goose Island had their mini golf tournament inside the Goose Island Barrel Warehouse, which is now the home of Finch Brewing. 
Oh, okay. Right? They ended up, uh, they were they were, they were were renting it, and uh, they had a chance to buy it. They should have bought it, because it's really one of the biggest spaces in town for beer. But they were renting it, and then Finch came in, and, and they started they started uh, subleasing. Okay. So looking at the map All right. this year. This does not go in alphabetical order. This is... <sighs> the Guild, what are you doing? First off, I instantly see Schwartz Brewing on this list. Oh, yeah? Aren't they in Michigan? Yeah, they're in Michigan. Hmm. Okay. All right, that's fine. But this does not run in alphabetical order, unlike uh, previous years that always ran in alphabetical order, right? That's true. Which, uh, good or bad, it was easy to find places. I like that because you knew uh, Alarmist was on one side and someone like, um, I don't know, Weiner was on the other side, mm -hmm. right? So you kind of could find stuff and you could kind of direct people that way. Uh, this is, uh, it's running all over. So it's really hard to now see if uh, someone like Phase 3 is on here. Uh, yeah, I see what you mean. It's, uh, it's listed numerically, but then it's just kind of got, I don't know. What what order would you call this? Because like microphones next to open outcry, <laughs> like how are? I don't know. Did they yeah. did they do? Uh, you know, we we've said before that uh, it's a good idea to maybe plan some of like the cool breweries and make sure you have room for them, right? Yeah, because you'll walk in and um, yeah, you'll have like uh, cause, but that's where that's where Gary Gully discovered that he needed to make a haze and then the one in. <laughs> the biggest prize at GMBF because <laughs> he was across from a microphone and microphone had this huge line, right? And he was like, well, dude, if you're not making this beer, you need to make it. I think that was the story when we went to... Oh, uh, we well, that was at... Uh, that, I think that was at Blog, wasn't it? It was at Oak Park Microbrew. Oh, it was at Oak Park? Yeah. Right. That was where it really uh, hit home for him on the Hayes side. More brewing's going to be there. Um, more in tables there. Who I don't see... Uh, Phase three. three. A lot of these folks are not part of the guild. Like we went to, like we're drinking Burn City. I don't think Burn City's part of the guild. Mm -hmm. And Bulldog, they said they weren't part of the guild, but they may be there. I'm probably gonna. The first brewery I'm probably gonna go to, honestly, is uh, is is uh, Scratch. Is Scratch on here? That's the first brewery I'm going to. It's probably Scratch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now, yeah. Speaking of alarmists, they are where you might think of Weiner being last year so they are surrounded by uh great central brewing lunar brewing smiley brothers hofbrau more brewing lunar. lagunitas and roaring table like in this outside area there lunar gets lost in the shuffle because if you get off the metra in villa park they've been around for 20 years but then you actually like walk right past lunar to get to more which is where's um where is scratch and why is Shorts there? Well, I don't know why Shorts is also, there. Also, who is Sandlot? Have you heard of Sandlot? Sandlot's no, this, on this list. This is us being like, I am I am sorry for anyone that shows up here and has something West. to expect. But yeah, it's us looking at who's Sidelot brewing. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to oh, figure out. Sandlot? You said Sandlot? Sidelot? Yeah. Migraine brewing? Who's Migraine brewing? Are they in the book? Are they in the Beer Miscuous book? You know, that, Brad, I that's the, last year's book. Oh, where's, your, where's your 2019 book? I didn't, they didn't give me one. But you got one. I don't know. St. Laurent is there. Who's J.T. Walker brewing? I don't know. Man. so No scratch. That's not true, Brad. I'm not believing you. No scratch. You, you might as well not even go now. All right. Well, if they're not there, if scratch After, isn't there. Afterthought then brewing? I'm just going to hit all these brews I've never heard. Like uh, maybe one or two. Because, you know, that'll piss you off. You hit four straight brews you've never heard of, and you're like, all right. Well, we're, well yeah, I'm going to try this. Where the fuck is Haymarket, right? My, After beer number, number my five. My grain brewery. All right. I'm probably going uh, JT Walker's brewery first. Uh, Little Beaver. Little Beaver. They got little, they're in like where you might find. Where you would have found like Blue Island and stuff like that previously. Wow. Will County Brewing, Wolfden Brewing. There's so many, you know, we're missing some names, but then there's so many names that I know nothing about that, you know, I, I feel pretty good about this. Around the Bend? They're there, though. Oh, yeah? So they're wrapping the district brew yards. Okay. Open yeah. Outcry. That's, uh, that's Will Turner's joint. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I'm not even seeing... Uh, Elmhurst Brewing, have you ever had anything from them? Or, no. Or 25 West? Wow, there's actually, now that Walker. we're talking about it, there's actually quite a few joints on here, maybe like uh, maybe 10 
that I've never heard of or have never had their beer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mentioned Blue Island, and I don't even see Blue Island here. That, man. I always like seeing uh, the Blue Island folks. I see Blue Nose. Black Horizon. That's another crew we've seen in the book, but we didn't. We haven't hit. Misbehaving Meads is going to be there. They had a stellar peanut butter and jelly mead at the. Uh, oh, so the closing ceremony last year was the um, the theater on the lake party. It was a tiki party. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Twenty five West Brewing. Forgot about that. Have you heard of 25 West Brewing? No. This is, we are missing folks. There are new folks here. Is and it? then shorts, what are they doing here? They moved, they moved to Illinois is what they did, right? Shorts, uh, I remember like loving shorts, right? Like shorts had some really interesting beers. People went nuts for them. But now you're kind of confusing me. We got short fuse. And we got shorts. Get out of here. I'm with you. This is um, <laughs> this this, Illinois Craft Beer Week. It's the, it's the launch for Illinois Week. And then also it's, um, it's, in a, it's in a landmark building, man. It's on the National Register of Historic Landmarks. Mm -hmm. this, is, this party is, for, is not for shorts. Not that we're picking on shorts, but it's not, it's not about that. I'm picking on shorts. Who's Wolf Den? <laughs> yeah. I got nothing. Will County. Dry City. I, we Blue. just spent the last five minutes naming all the breweries we don't we know. We don't know, yeah. <laughs> uh, That's so I think that'll be probably be the takeaway from Bug this year. Oh, I'm actually kind of excited about that, man. This seems like a, so look. a bad move. Goose Island is in, you know, when you often, if you've ever gone to the left side at, uh, when you go into the uh, conservatory, there's like a little, you like. You walk in and go left. You go left, and there's like, you know, the slide is back to the kids' area, yeah. and it gets kind of tight in there. Goose Island is there. Nice. I like that. So I wonder, hopefully they're not bringing anything crazy, because uh, that's going to be a dangerous spot. So the spot I was talking about is called the Artist Garden. Goose Island and Low Rise. Oh, Goose Island shares a table with Pollyanna. Really? I, I don't know. So if I go to um, if I go where I said I was gonna go, the uh, artist garden, that little the little garden on the right. When you walk in and then go past the main entry and go to the right, so I'll be hanging out with uh, Lunar, Roaring Table, and Soul Taco. Oh, but Hot Butcher and Forbidden Root are back there, and so is Great Central and Alarmus is back there. So I'm still going back there first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that's outside. That's outside. Wait, there's less. Is there less breweries and more outside this time because there is nothing in the show house. Unless I'm thinking the show house is different, right? No, there's usually a ton of stuff in the show house. Right? Yeah. Um, Penrose was in there last year. I've seen Saint, the, the very first time I had St. Laurent was in the show house. Right, and we talked to uh, one of the guys that do the rainbow ice cream. Oh, uh, Horsey Hollow and Open Outcry. They were in there last year. Yeah, there's nothing in the show house. There's so nothing inside. Right? There's only two breweries in the all of inside. There's only two breweries in the entire inside. That can't be right. And then that horticulture hall. They're sticking everybody way in the back. There's a lot more outside this year, which it could be good or it could be bad, right? Yeah. This is interesting. There's six breweries. So of these 66 options, there are six breweries inside. Those six breweries are uh, Peckish Pig, Hopewell, Tighthead, Dry City. I believe that's in Wheaton. Um, oh, Goose Island and uh, Low Res. Those are the breweries inside. <laughs> Everybody else is, uh, no, well, Horticultural Hall has eight breweries. Right, but that's yeah. not even, there's no plants or anything in there. Yeah. They got everyone away from the plants. Did something happen? Something must have happened. Because last year, most of the party, so like most of the party was in the Palm House, um, the Show House. The Show House. And the... Uh, what is this? Whatever's the sugar from the sun, that area. Most of the, a lot of the party was there. Yeah, yeah. You know, the Palm House is, it's big. There's, you know, two breweries at each table. Palm Lapp House at is Will the same. County, Middlebrow, yeah. and Tighthead. So, hmm. that's interesting. Horticultural Hall is going to be cool, but yeah, like you said, it's just a hallway, and there's not a lot of plants there. 
Right. It's a hallway to often lead you outside. Mm-hmm. Like that's who's the uh, who's the eight top in uh, corridor hotel hall. All right. So who we got? Well, no, there's more than eight there because some of these people share multiple tables. Oh. Like 58 is Crystal Lake and Misbehaving Meads. 59 is Dry Hop and Midnight Pig. Uh, This is, it's a different list. Like the different breweries, a different layout. Maybe it makes you uh, try some other beers. There there had to have been uh, reasons to this madness, right? I'd like to know more about that. So if we see some (laughs) of the guild folks, that would be my first question. Like why are there only six breweries? Um. On the main... And why is it not in alphabetical order? In the main rooms. The main um, the main plant rooms. Right. There's only six breweries. Why, why is that? When, there was a lot more in that last year. Uh-huh. So Last Pour is also at 9.15, which uh, seems early, right? It starts know. at 6? Uh, pre uh, VIP starts at like 5.30. Right. And I, then so... Uh, general mission starts at six, probably. Mm-hmm. So you have three hours, basically. So get there. Yeah. If you're thinking That's of, fair. if you have general mission and you're going to bug, get sh- there early because they don't let you in. Like, and you could wait in line for an hour, and then it's seven o'clock before you get in. Like, just be ready for that. That's a fact. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We. D- Looked at this list and I have not, I don't even I still don't even know. <laughs> All right, let's switch gears. All right, what All else right. we got happening? All this right, week? so um, let's talk about the other stuff going on in uh, ICBW. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, you talked about Horsey Hollow and Open Outcry, so they're doing the Rainbow Connection again. Nice. Um, that is the uh, it's a flight of beers that's modeled after the Rainbow Cone, which is a, a ice cream shop right down the street from those two breweries on Western that's been around since like 1926. Okay. Right. Um, these are the flavors in the original Rainbow Cone. Uh, chocolate, strawberry, pistachio, orange sherbet, and Palmer House. What what flavor is Palmer House? Palmer House is a cherry ice cream with uh, <laughs> chunks of cherry and walnut, Brad. <laughs> uh, Palmer House tastes like Palmer House. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that party is on, um, it looks like 516, man. Yeah, and that's uh, that's like 11 a.m. I Damn. like that. All right. Yeah, if you need an excuse to get off work. Actually, uh, 515. I lied to you. 11 a.m. 5.15. So that's the following weekend. 5.16, it's like... Uh, oh, so it's like in the middle of the week. It's like next Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, I'm excited for that. I didn't miss... I missed that last year. Yeah, I wanted to go, but I always say I want to go to Open Outcry, and I don't go. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers to uh, uh, Corridor. They have a party with, um, with Phase 3. Uh, they have a collab. It's called Set Your Phasers to Stun. So the DDH, D-I-P-A, uh, that's going down on 516 at Corridor. Cool. We like Corridor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, 512, right? 512, because that's Saturday. Mm-hmm. Uh, LeJuice Citra. Nice. Getting released. Can release of the first uh, variant of LeJuice. Okay. I-, I will be there picking them cans. Because I got to nice. make my way to Evanston, so I'll go that way. Right on. The... Um, the sixth annual um, cheeseburger in a paradise from Spiteful Brewery. Uh, that goes down on 523. Have you gone to this event? No, it's always sold out. This yeah. is an event I always would love to go to, and I just don't go. It's at Guthrie's, um, Guthrie's Tavern. It's a, uh, a $15 ticket, 7 p.m. start to 15 bucks. Gets you cheeseburger, and it gets you entry into a dice tournament. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. It's done. Simple. I like that. We should have asked them when we were interviewing them about this event. We forgot, man. Yeah. We forgot. That's a, that's a fun concept. I like that, man. Yeah. Um, oh, Beer Fly Alley Fight, man. Mm-hmm. Beer Fly Alley Fight is at Metro. Uh, that's a uh, $35 ticket. Uh, that starts at noon. Um, what day? Shit. What day is What? Been? knew I was going to ask this. <laughs> Uh, it's during craft beer week, so it's probably Saturday or Sunday. Yeah. Uh, so um, May eighteenth. Oh, s- that's a Saturday. So it's the following week. Yeah. So you know that was um, I was looking at. I was gonna ask you what are your favorite Chicago craft beer week moments, Illinois craft beer week moments, and I think like beer fly alley fight at the the ones at Haymarket are one. Those are on mine for sure. Uh, but yeah, this that that's on Saturday the following week that spills past. Illinois Craft Beer Week. Like I said, 
the Illinois Craft Beer Week is now, it's just the start of the drinking summer. I think that's the only way to look at this now because there aren't, it's not a week full of events. Um, a lot of events now happen on the weekends and they just carry over. There's no freshies this year or, right, uh, freshies, right, from Hop Review? Yeah, that's coming. No, they pushed it. They pushed right. it back. And they were big into, like, kind of making the observation that, you know, it's Illinois Craft Beer Week, but only four or five events are happening outside of Chicagoland. Yeah. So I think, it, um, I don't know, there, there's room for adjustment there. Mm -hmm. right? And and then you said Beer Fly Alley Fights the 18th. That's also Dark Lord Day. Oh, shit. So this Dark Lord Day. They also throws off Illinois Craft Beer Week a little bit too. I liked it when Dark Lord Day was like smack in the middle. <laughs> I like I like that. It created chaos. I love that. Yeah. So it now was... it's just there's a what is Dark Lord Day the closing event now for the week? It's the Sunday after. It's a Saturday. It's a Saturday after. Um, uh, it's bug. a Saturday after Bug. The full week Saturday after Bug. Yeah, it's Dark Lord Day. Right. We're going to be there, by the way. We'll be there, yeah. Uh, but you also can get a passport now. There is this, they're doing their Illinois Craft Beer Week. There's the passport that you can get. That I would love, if you are someone who gets a passport, let me know. I've seen one person in my entire, probably last five years, have a passport and get stamps from someone while I was there. What do you get when you... I think you get discounts or you get a T-shirt. When I went on the bourbon trail, they got a T-shirt. Right. I didn't really. I didn't. I didn't get the T-shirt. I want to meet someone that like does that the did, passport. That did the whole thing. Or that's going or plans to do it. Yeah. I don't. I don't even know where you get your passport. Probably a bug. Wherever. Yeah. Or Wherever or, passports are given. <laughs> Probably at participating places. We're, yeah, we're going to be banned from guild <laughs> events. <sighs> I tell you, one of my favorite guild events was the clothes. I'm really mad about this clothes thing, man. Like, the But the, I forgot because I wore, everyone wore tiki gear. And they were like, you know, they were like, what do you call those little, you know, little dresses that are made out of like, you know, like coconut skin or whatever. I don't think it's coconut skin, <laughs> but... <laughs> Grass, the grass skirts. <laughs> they were grass skirts. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, no, everybody was committed to the to the tiki theme at the close last year, and I dug that. Oh yeah, I dug that. Um, Wasn't uh, was that the Half Acre event? Was it the no, close? No, this was at a uh, theater on the lake. Mm. Didn't Half Acre have a party during Craft Beer Week one time? It was called the Sands. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jana from Haymarket told me that this party was so crowded that she had to sneak Ray Daniels into the party because they were like, dude, we were at capacity. But Yeah, that, that fruit. <laughs> like, people, people, who, people who went will tell you that's the best party that ever happened. All right, so it's Half Acre. What's the name of this beach, man? It's, we saw um, the Mumford & Sons played there right after the uh, Blackhawks won the title. It's like, oh, Montrose. I think it's Montrose Beach. Okay. It was at Montrose Beach, half acre, half acre throws a party called the Sands, Craft Beer Week, and it's also their anniversary party, right? And yeah, we hear we I heard it was great. I, I wouldn't know. I didn't go. I didn't go either. I've never gone to a half acre event. Same. I've never been to a half acre party. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the guild like the guild does more stuff than just like you throw cool events. Right. Like they are. We're, we're losing track of what the guild does. They are. Uh, proponents of uh, beer, craft beer, in the state. Like that's their job. I'm glad. Right. You're, I'm glad you're bringing us back home here. Brad. Like that's not. They're not to make us happy and we like spent, throw on a good event. We spent like at least <laughs> 15, 20 minutes dissecting this one party that they throw. Right. But right. that's not really even their mission. They're a nonprofit, and yeah, they go downstate to lobby these antiquated laws. That are putting brewers at a disadvantage, right? Right. Uh, Danielle uh, De Alessandro is the executive director. Um, oh, I brought her name up because um, uh, recently she she won an award, um, and it was actually a pretty impressive award. Yeah. Um, nice. I mean, not impressive enough for me to remember. Uh, Thirty eight minutes <laughs> into the show, but well, a couple hazes no, later. No, she was actually. Yeah. Um, she was awarded the uh, FX Matt Defense of the Industry Award 
by the Brewers Association. Oh, right? cool. Okay. Um, because of her pursuit of legislation that supports Illinois craft brewers. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and I think she's got a background in law. I mean, so that is that is really what the guild's all about. Like, we, you know, we spend a lot of time dissecting these parties because <laughs> we like parties, but yeah. the guild is really about And that's what that. the public sees. Like, the public doesn't... Uh, uh, benefit they benefit from the laws but they don't they don't get they don't care you can't drink the laws right yeah. and like they're not every brewery is part of the guild like we said like there are breweries that aren't part of it uh, either because they can't afford to they don't like what they're doing or they just uh you know forgot to renew <laughs> you know stuff like that happens too <laughs> Whoops. yeah so um, but every brewery benefits from what they end up doing yeah, um, the I want to say back in 2012. That's my favorite craft beer year was 2012. Craft beer week year it was okay. 20, that was the because uh, the closing ceremony was the opening party for Revolution Kedzie. Ooh, yeah. yeah. So it was um, so that was cool. Um, Chicago Beer Geeks. We did our beer with Wild Onion that year, and then we threw a party at the Bottom Lounge that year. Okay. So, so we're you going, were busy, dude. Like the Goose Mini Golf, Rev Close, and then uh, our own party. Goose Mini Golf was good. Yeah, um, Haymarket actually had their general contractor who built their their brewery come out and build their their hole at the. <laughs> so they had like they had like a really elaborate hole at this thing. Right. Um, Greg Porter brought a bunch of geese from his house, like these geese, like surrounding. Oh, statues. maybe I didn't go to that mini golf. Maybe I went to the first mini golf. Maybe, yeah. The first mini golf was just in the, the place across, from them. Yeah. Yeah. Where Finch is now. Yeah, that was that's that the one. one. Oh. They only did it once. Oh, so I didn't. I thought the, I didn't realize everyone built holes. I dude, thought it was intense. Uh, yeah, it was a pretty cool. Yeah, it was a pretty cool party. Yeah, so between that, the Goose one, uh, the Deception, and Wells Park, and those were some pretty some pretty good events in this in this craft beer thing. Yeah, Wells Park was good. Yeah. Um, oh, but yeah, man, uh, beer fly alley fight, man. That's a classic. Mm -hmm. That's a classic. It was a Haymarket for years because that's where the drinking and writing theater was. Now it's at Metro. Cool. Um, I think it's a it's a beer event, but it's put on by the Neo Futurist, right. which is like that uh it's like that theater company, in Andersonville. No, they that spot closed. I don't know where they are now. Oh, what do you mean the Neo Futurarium closed? Damn. Yeah, the Man, that place was nice. where they used to do too much light makes a baby go blind. Yeah, it's like twenty plays in one. It's gone. Really? Yeah. Man, that sucks. Mr. Fucking Current Affairs, this guy. I don't know where they. I don't know where they are. They're at Metro drinking. Now. Be a, yeah, and they'll be at Metro <laughs> on the 18th throwing a beer fly alley fight. Yeah. So right on, man. Whew. I don't know what a what a mess. What, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, this is Narwhal Picnic's fault, man. <laughs> Dude, we spent like twenty. We spent like twenty minutes on fucking a bug. We're like, um, uh, we're like, the, why, at why is there no one in the fucking fern room? <laughs> What am I going to do? What do you mean there's no way in the fern room? Last year, there were 12 fuckers in the fern room. Oh, man. Crazy. Oh. All right. But I think we're going to... I'm glad we cleaned it up talking about how to guild and what they yeah. really do. But we're going to do a post. We're going to do a recap of Bug. I think uh, we're going to have a, a fellow podcaster, a fellow Chicago beer podcaster okay. on. And Why not? Shy beer guy? Yeah. We're going to get some other opinions instead of You're Nick wrong. and I's... Hazy ramblings. <laughs> Fucking brew yards, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so those are some of the events for Illinois Craft Beer Week. Uh, there are a bunch of can releases. I saw that uh, also Noon Whistle has a can release they're doing. Well, they do can releases every week. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, everyone has stuff coming out this week. Uh, we also, on the episode with District Brew Yards, we mentioned their can releases that they're doing for the week. So it's a... Uh, I tell you, man, I'm excited about that. Um, around the bend, uh, rose ale. It's got like, uh, it's got like raspberries and like fucking Sound good, yeah, uh, and like the uh, carrots, <laughs> and it's like a sparkling ale base. And even like when uh, Christian came over because he was brewing, he's like, dude, this fucking this fucking thing is. He was like, he was the most jazzed yeah. about that. Dan, like when he gave me uh, the beer I was having, he reminds me of uh, when we were at Forbidden Root and. Mm -hmm. Randy Moser's like, oh, yeah, I got this weird shipment from China in of this like plan. It's like, what is this fruit that you just you made that up, man? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, oh, man, I remember that. It's cool. <laughs> it's cool what people find that uh, you get some different flavors that you may not have had before that you're introduced for the first time, and then you're like, you might see at the store, and you're like, oh, well, I know what that 
weird orange lemon is. Yeah, it's the other end of the adjunct spectrum, right? You got guys that are like, like, like we said, like not everyone's doing adjuncts, but the breweries that are doing it are doing all the weird shit and they're doing it every single week. Yeah, right? and doing it well. Yeah, and they're doing it well. And then you got this other end where it's like, well, Lucky Charms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a different, that's a nuts sub. <laughs> yeah, I think there's two different types of adjunct folks. And, you know, the Randy Mosier and Around the Bend adjunct folks, and then the folks that are doing the really way out there, bizarro, anything goes, any ingredient you can think of, any food you can think of that you've had in, yeah. in your childhood in the, in the kettle now. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right, so before we get out of here, was there anything else? You still have a list. You still have a whole page well, there's there. There's news. All right, what do we got? Let's get into some news, man. Shout out to Dry Hop and Corridor, that crew. Yeah. Um, you know, ever since Cor- Corridor opened, um, haven't been to Dry Hop as much. No. Only because Corridor is more on my route. Yeah. Oh, but anyway, they're opening a third location. What? Where are they naming it? Where are they naming it? They're naming it Crushed by Giants. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So they're in a building that houses uh, the AMC Theater right off Michigan Avenue. That's so far. Oh, I'll never go. I'll never yeah, go. Yeah, that's like <laughs> Streeterville. It's, it, yeah, that's a weird area, man. Awesome for them. It's the, it's across the street from Italy, which is great uh, because Italy has a brewery on the second floor that's only open like half the fucking week. Right. Like, you know, come on. That's cool. I'm probably more likely to go to Open Outcry <laughs> than down. <laughs> I'll be on 115th and Western before I go to fucking <laughs> before I go to fucking Michigan Avenue. I'm with you on that, man. It's weird as fuck over there, man. But that's awesome for them for like <laughs> tourist wise. Yeah. Like, oh, they're so gonna kill it. So it's a it's a, a Mexican city style pub. They're gonna talk. They're gonna focus oh, on hazies because okay. that's their thing. Yeah. Hazies and um, rotating uh, Mexican lagers and tacos. So there's a spot called Income Tax that I haven't been to, but I passed oh. it recently. The Income Tax chef is moving, and he's gonna join this project. Damn. Okay. And then it's in a building. Um, that used to have uh, uh, Heaven on Seven, which is a really popular. Yeah, in the, so it's in the AMC building. It's in the AMC building. You take these mm. huge set of escalators up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's awesome. It's their third location. Crushed by Giants refers to the fact that AMC is in that building, and Under Armour is a neighbor in that building. And like negotiating things with these really big companies was cumbersome for him as a small brewery owner sure yeah and so he's like well the name of my brew is gonna be crushed by giants it's kind of a, like you know an ode to that yeah that experience right <laughs> yeah um 120 seats damn well, that's awesome joint. good for them man because there ain't a lot of options you talk about clark street and these are just these ain't even breweries we're talking just good bars period um side door uh clark street ale house i don't know what hell house and hood is doing but we've, right. we shot the show from there that was one of the first episodes where we went to the roof and we didn't say shit. I thought we, that closed. Did they? Did it close? It's over. That was like, I didn't we do it? And they were like, "Yeah, we're closing in like six months." It was so good. I don't know. I haven't. Like the, I, the I have roof. not been downtown in a long time. Right. Then that's the point. Right. It's a block off Michigan, and there ain't a lot of beer centric stuff going on oh. over there. So, uh, look at them. And and you could get yourself a crawler and sneak it in to, to AMC to the theater. You know, and when Anchorman Three comes out, you're, you're gonna be set. Uh, is that is that happen? I saw Anchorman Two over there. All right, so good for them. Um, Pace Magazine they had a mm-hmm. they had a blind tasting of 102 lagers recently. That's their thing quarterly. Let's get a bunch of beers and blind taste yeah. them. Um, we'll just go through some noteworthy entries of the 102. Um, 102 through 31 were not ranked, right? But there were some some ones that sounded familiar. Spiteful Lager was in that list. Okay. Uh, so was Lagunitas. Uh, Lagers Super Lager is a lager needed entry. Two Brothers, uh, $100 cab ride was their lager. Oh. Yeah. Oh, wait. I remember hearing about this beer. I love that name. It's good. Because yeah. <laughs> if you live in fucking Warrenville. <laughs> yeah. It's a $100 cab ride. <laughs> what the bug? And you're like, I gotta go home. <laughs> Urban Chestnut's Wickle. We've had that on the show. Oh, that's good. Um, that With the crazy top that comes all the way off. Mm-hmm. Super cool beer. Um, Sun King's Pachanga. That's the one that uh, came with the, uh, god damn, what you call that thing that's full of candy that is like the little Mexican party thing, and you beat it, and then it comes out, and the candy yeah. falls out? Uh-huh. It came with one of those. Piñata. Thank you. God damn, what's wrong with me? You know, this is the last time we're drinking this fucking beer <laughs> on this show, man. <laughs> New Oberfalls. Uh, they were in that 102 to 31 list. I don't even know. New Oberfalls is um, in Indiana, and they were a crew that was, um, they were an underground crew 
that made okay. it to the pro ranks. Their Hellas was in the uh, one. Sounds like you're talking about wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> so underground wrestler who made it to the WWE. Goose Island, <laughs> a natural villain, also in the list. Okay. Oh, but the uh, the surprise on the list was um, number nine, which was Emmett's Brewing, their Munich Light. Whoa. Okay. Yeah, their Munich Light was number nine, and then um, that beer took a gold at JBF in 2016. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Um, the James Beard Awards were in Chicago this past week. Um, James Beard Awards are basically the Oscars for food, wine, and spirit, essentially, right? And it's held at the uh, Lyric Opera House downtown every year. Um, the uh, outstanding producer of wine, spirit, or beer this year was uh, Rob Todd from Allagash. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. Allagash has been around since 1995. Now, that, that party has been going on since 91, but this outstanding wine, spirit, or beer producer thing has only happened since 2012 and okay. um there's only been two other times where a, a beer producer actually won the award uh sam calgione from dogfish back in 2014 garrett oliver from brooklyn in 2017 okay so cool a beer dude won the fucking uh beer spirit or wine category at the uh oscars yeah oscars yeah. for boot and then speaking about awards uh the was it the world beer or the jbf not jbf they added two more hazy styles to the awards. Uh, yes. Why am I forgetting? Not world oh, beer. The, um, no, JBF, the, the yeah. categories. The categories. The style category. Yeah. Like two more hazy categories. So Chicago should clean up big time Dude, this we, time. We love those styles. I mean, uh, we're drinking two good examples right here. Right. So there's a strong, I know there's a strong pale hazy, which is what? It's called strong pale. Strong, pale, hazy. Man, which is somehow somehow different from... The IPA. Yeah. So there's strong, pale, there's double. Yeah, because there was a double. There's IPA, IPA <laughs> and there's uh, another one that I'm totally forgetting now, but... It's becoming an accepted right. style, an accepted category. Yeah. The people have spoken, you know? I want to say, because um, for like eight, eight years or so, the top two categories were... Um, IPA and double IPA. Right. And now they open this juicy category. And I want to say, well, juicy was the l category that was held to the very last award of the night last year in its first year. So, I mean, people, you know, we're drinking a beer that was canned five days ago. I mean, this is this is how we this is how we drink beer. So this is reflected in the awards. It's got to be hard. Uh, we're about a year away from those awards when they would happen now. It's going to be tough like that. October. That haze, those what? F there's a four or five hazy beers now categories. Like, that's I. You gotta be nuts to judge that. Like, yeah, I think that's where Alarmus Alarmus was. It was one of those beers where it's like, all right, from the time you you know put it on the on the truck to get it to Denver, you know, and by the time it gets in a a, a judge's glass, right? That's a two week run, right? Right. So you're you're having you you're in that style, but. Not everyone's making those styles. Well, last year, not everyone was making those styles at the last. Right, and that was something. Saying, that's fucked up. Two weeks. <laughs> yeah, and that <laughs> was something we, <laughs> when we talked to Alarmist, that that was something they were conscious of, that they knew, like, yeah, you need these beers to last more than a week. Like, that's it's yeah. bullshit to think that someone is going to buy this four-pack and drink it today. Yeah, yeah. I've been victim of those, man. I've had a beer. It was amazing. And I went back and got the beer, and then everything fell out of it. It's yeah. like sugar water after 10 days. That's not cool. Beer integrity. That's, that's you know, we need beer integrity in this joint, man. Um, yeah. All right. Um, oh, uh, also in the news, Avengers Endgame. Man, I don't want to spoil this for anybody. Did you see Avengers Endgame? I didn't see it, but I know what happened. All right, cool. I so, watched the Spider-Man trailer, so I know what happened. <laughs> Oh, but so there's um there's a cool uh, article on craftbeer.com this week because um, Avengers, a lot of it, Endgame and Infinity War were shot in Georgia. That's like the Hollywood of the South. Oh, but anyway, there's a scene where um, Thor is drinking a ton of beer in this fucking movie, right? Okay. And then the beer he's drinking is from uh, Georgia-based uh, Creature Comforts celebrating their five-year anniversary. Whoa. Yeah, so Creature Comforts actually has two beers in this fucking movie, man. One's a Berliner Weiss, and then the other one is uh, a Tropicala, which is like an IPA. So the way it, it, it sounds like the guys who the brothers who produced the film were noticing that members of the production crew were leaving this billion dollar film set to go chase this beer. Like we'll be back. We got to go get this fucking beer from Creature Comforts, right? And so it's like, well, that's interesting. We got a beer scene. So let's talk to the guys 
because our crew is going nuts over their yeah. beer. So that's how it came together. So a, a company that's five years old is now in like the biggest movie of the year. Holy because shit! Because of that. So that that's really cool, man. So cheers to those guys. They would leave the set and go chase beer trucks because they knew awesome. where it was going. Yeah. yeah. Um, and speaking of five years, man, Beer Miscuous is turning five years old. What? And um, they are brewing a uh, five-star hazy pale ale with around a bend. Okay. Uh, for their five-year celebration. Yeah, they had just left the facility when we showed up. Yeah. Mm. Last bit of news, man. Uh, the good folks at Three Floyds uh, opened their distillery last week. Just in time for Dark Lord Day. <laughs> it's online, man. Their cocktail Where bar. are you going to buy... The beer now. I don't know. The last like three years, it ran through the not opened distillery next door. Yeah. So you go down that little um, that little country road into the industrial park, and there was a distillery next to the brewery. Distillery was closed, not open yet, and everybody walked through there to get the beer. We shall see. But I think they should do. Uh, does Surly do this? Where or someone does this? Where if you got a ticket, it was Rev. You could show up. Or Haymarket did this. You could show up within like your two week window mm. to buy the beer. Like you can buy it on the day that it was released, but if you don't make it, feel free to show up within a week. And if you don't show up, we, we will sell it. It will go back to the general public. I like that. I like that. Because as it stands now, um, you've got, you know, lots A through E or, you know, ticket times A through E to pick up your beer. And then if you miss any of the previous times, you've got until E. To get okay. your beer, but you got to get it that day. Yeah. So, but yeah, their cocktail bar looks fucking nice. For Dark Lord Day. For the, the the distillery. Oh, the distillery in the, general. The distillery in general looks great online. Uh oh, how are, how are we getting Dark Lord Day? I have no idea what's going on, Brad. I couldn't even get through this app, dude. As we stumbled <laughs> hard as fuck through this app, I don't even a think... beer and a half, and you're like. <laughs> Cocktails and Dark Lord. <laughs> I don't know, man. They're going to have to open up a hotel or Dude. like some sort of like Japanese nap house. As a thing? Yeah. I don't know. Like a little like <laughs> an hour hotel, but not for sex, like for naps. You can't tell people what to do, man. If it's small enough, like <laughs> just like cubby hole. If you design it that way. Yeah. Seriously, man. Just naps. It's a monster. We, yeah, we're gonna need help with this. I have no idea. I have no idea how we're getting to it from Dark Lord. Ah, uh, yikes! All right, well, we gotta worry about Bug first, and so we had two episodes this week. We had this one. We had our uh, District Brew Yards. Check that out. Half hour there, hour here. All right, we gotta get out of here. Nick, where can people find you? Get in touch when we're not here. Right on, man. I'm on Twitter at Nicosia. and I'm on Twitter at B Red Chicago Beer Pass. Uh, Chicago Beer Pass on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. We're posting all kinds of stuff, photos, events, other things all around. Website, chicagobeerpass.com. Everything's posted there. And uh, look for us at Bug. Take care. Cheers. Cheers.